Hey crew, it's Chris Gilmore here from chrisoutdoors.ca and the Mushroom Growers and Wild Fungi Identification Course. And I'm doing a video today on how to cut mushroom logs and how to do so in a way that's sustainable. So thinking about forest management and the health of all the other species that we share the earth with while we're actually harvesting our logs. So if you didn't know this already, when you're inoculating mushroom logs to grow your own mushrooms, and today I'm cutting logs to be growing uh, lion's mane, shiitake, and oyster mushrooms. So those are the, the species that I'll be inoculating into these logs uh, to create some beautiful healthy food and some great medicine for myself and my family. Um, when you're cutting logs you need to cut fresh green logs meaning we're cutting live trees like the ones around me right now. If you try to cut a log that's already down on the forest floor and it's been there for a while uh, it's already going to have other mycelium from other funguses in it. It's probably going to dry it out a little bit and uh, those native funguses will outcompete the mushroom you're trying to inoculate. So we do need to cut healthy green trees when we're doing this. So if we're going to cut live trees down in the forest, uh, we want to make sure that we're doing it in a way that's sustainable and potentially benefits the forest. So the first thing that I'm going to do when I start thinking about which trees to cut, if I just do a spin around here, you can kind of see I'm in a young, uh, predominantly hardwood forest. And I'm looking for things like maple, oak, ash to uh, to grow on. Uh, those nice hardwoods are great for those species of mushrooms I just mentioned. So what I do, the first step, is really just take an assessment of the ecology of this forest and think, what does this forest need? Or what could I do here that would uh, first not hurt the forest and second, maybe even help the ecology of this forest? So in this forest here, as I look around, what I can see is it's probably 80 to 90% maple trees in here right now. And and that's great because I want to harvest maple trees. It's also a fairly young forest and the trees are growing very close together. And that tells me that a lot of these trees are actually going to naturally die eventually on their own. And you can already see that in that there's a fair bit of disease and rot in some of these trees from them growing so densely together. So what I want to do is think about, okay, well, if I'm going to start cutting trees out of the canopy, as soon as I cut a tree down, it opens up light in the canopy. There's more space up there. When the crowns are crowded, like over there, there's not enough light. Uh, but when you look above me right here and you see an opening, well, having an opening like that is going to actually create healthier growth for whatever younger trees are down at the bottom of that opening. So what I'm going to do is actually thin for species diversity. So there's two trees in particular that I'm very interested in increasing. And one of them is this one right here. This is a red oak tree right here beside me. And uh, there's, as I said, there's only probably about 10% of the trees are red oak. Red oak are very important for our local wildlife here. Uh, they produce nice fat acorns that help the birds, the bears, the deer, the moose, even the wolves for that matter, get through the winter time. So having more oak is really good for the forest and there's not a ton of them in this little patch. And the other one over here, is a uh, beech. So this is an American beech tree. Same thing, beech uh, are provide an abundance of food. And the other interesting going on, we have this disease right now called beech bark disease that's killing a lot of our beech. Uh, and we don't know yet whether some of these young beech might actually survive or be resistant to it. So trying to protect any of the young beech that haven't um, shown sign of disease yet uh, increases the odds that some of them will make it through this disease, this, this kind of plague that's affecting the beech and repopulate the area. Area. So let's chat about how I'm going to pick my trees right now. So the first one I looked at, I was like, okay, well, there's two beach. Uh, sorry, there's the beach there, there's the oak there, and it's quite crowded in here. Here's a maple right here that's the perfect size for my log. It's about four inches, five inches in diameter. Great size mushroom log. So I thought, great, I'm going to cut that one down. But as I look up, I'm not sure if you can see... Whoop. There's a crack going up the side of the tree there. And looking at that crack, there's a chance that some other funguses, things like turkey tail or other mycelium have already gotten into that crack. Um, and when I cut it down, uh, it may already be infected and not a great tree. So I'm actually not going to cut that one because I see that blemish. So step one, look at the ecology of the forest and think about how um, to work with it and what you could do to improve it. Step number two, start looking for the best trees to cut out to open up the canopy for the things that you want to encourage like the beech and the maple there. The other thing I liked about this clump is you have three maples, one, 
two, three, all growing side by side. So one or two of these is potentially gonna die anyways because they're overcrowded. So by taking this one out, you're actually helping the other two trees, but that's not a great mushroom tree. So I'm actually gonna leave that one. But when I turn around here, this next one, as you look up, this is a big, tall, healthy tree. I can probably get like six to eight logs out of this one maple tree. And it is south, right? The sun rises in the east, sets in the west. So it crosses the, the southern sky, uh, which means if I want to um, create more light to help this oak and this beech grow, then I want to open the canopy above and just to the south to allow it to get more sun. And this maple is just south of the beech and the uh, oak tree there. So and it's the perfect size for logs. I look up, there's no blemishes in it. Everything about this says, okay, this is a great tree for me to take out. Uh, I can feel really good about it. Uh, I'm not hurting the forest and you could even make an argument that I'm helping the forest by improving the chance of these trees making it, thus increasing species diversity uh, on this plot of land. So just thought you might find that interesting. I'm gonna show you one other tree uh, that I'm gonna try and help out here as I go. Uh, and these are these beautiful little white pine trees down here. There's no big ones in this section, but there's a whole bunch of tiny little ones. Now, white pine used to play a very important role in the ecology of this area, and they still do today, except a lot of them were logged out by the British in the 1900s uh, and shipped off to England to build ships. So we don't have the population density of white pine that we used to, nor the big old growth pine here that we used to. So something else I'm gonna do as I'm thinning out maples, I'm also gonna look for like these tiny little pines and do the same thing. So here, again, is a perfect example, a nice, perfect size mushroom log, uh, nice and healthy crown, and it's directly south of this tiny little white pine tree. So I'm gonna cut this maple down here as well. Uh, I'll probably get another six to eight logs out of that. Uh, and I'll be helping out this little pine and increasing the chances of it being able to grow. So that's how I tend the forest that, uh, that I get to caretake here um, when I'm cutting my logs and doing it in a way where I get to benefit from the food and medicine that I'm growing in the logs. And I try to make sure that the forest benefits as well. <laughs>